Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you all the essential steps to deep frying a turkey from start to finish. We start of course with buying a fresh turkey. Please avoid using a frozen turkey by all means necessary. You do not want to introduce a semi-thawed turkey to 325 degree oil because you will get an eruption and most likely a fire. So please be sure your turkey is fresh. I, I purchased this 13 and a half pound organic turkey from one of the big box wholesale stores. This turkey was fed a vegetarian diet, has no growth hormones, it's free range, blah blah blah. At the end of the day that means jack to me because the turkey is going to take a nice bath and some hot ass peanut oil. So free range that. With that being said, let us begin. You want to determine how much oil is required to fry your turkey. To do so, you have to place your turkey into your turkey fryer pot and fill it up with water until the turkey is fully submerged. To determine your fill line, remove the turkey from the pot and the amount of water left over will be the exact amount of oil that you will have to put in. My fill line will be about an inch and a half above the caution and dention. However, depending on your turkey fryer, you may have to mark your fill line. Next, you want to start preparing your turkey by first removing the turkey neck, whatever the hell this thing is, any and all plastic pieces, the pop-up timer, turkey giblet bag at least I think that's called a giblet bag you want to trim all excess skin and unnecessary fat again trim all excess skin and unnecessary fat get it out of here you do not need it Next, give her a good washing. Prior to preparing your turkey inside of your sink, please make sure your sink is thoroughly cleaned before and of course after. My wife and I, we don't like to use bleach. So we, we use vinegar to eradicate any and all forms of bacteria. It works like a charm and it's completely natural. Well, please do me a favor, do your guests a favor. Clean your dirty ass sink. Please disinfect it before you're doing this with your turkey. You don't want your turkey tasting like, like dish soap. You don't want no dish soap turkey. But please wash your sink before and after, like on a serious note. Lastly, you want to thoroughly dry your turkey. Try to use a towel versus paper towels because paper towels will sometimes leave residues on your turkey. But if you are going to use paper towels, be sure to buy a high quality paper towel versus paper towels from the dollar store. That is what I did and it did not leave any residues. Next, you want to loosen up the membrane between the skin and the meat so you can add your dry rub between there. You do this by using a rubber spatula like so. Do not use a knife because the knife will puncture the skin and you want to avoid that. Now it's time to apply your dry rub.
you want to season the entire turkey. Don't be stingy and don't try to get cute with it. Season this bird with the utmost disrespect and aggression. I've been using this dry rub on my turkeys for the past decade. I know I am the amateur's amateur and I am true to that. However, when it comes to deep frying a turkey, I am no amateur. I am a 10 year veteran. I fried a lot of turkeys in these years and that's only because they're so damn delicious and personally for me, this is the only way to cook them. Anyhow, if you're interested in knowing what's inside of that bottle, meaning what the ingredients are for my dry rub, please click on the link at the end of this video and I'll show you exactly what I put in that bottle. And if any of you guys have a particular way that you season your turkey, please share it in the comments below. The recipe that is, and I would be glad to try it. Once your turkey is completely seasoned, give her a nice full body massage. Don't be scared to get up under those armpits. pits. Caress her with love. Now, pour some rubber to the palm of your hand and season between the skin and the meat. Next, we want to insert garlic cloves into small slits in the entire turkey. This ensures further penetration of flavors throughout the turkey. I learned this technique from my grandfather and it proves successful every time. I usually do this under the skin because when it fries, these slits will expand and look a little bit dark. However, when I finish this turkey in particular, I will carve it up versus leaving it on the stand for my guests to carve themselves. For me, presentation is everything. The last thing that I do is inject magic into the entire turkey with this needle. Magic. Oh, get back in there. Get back in there. You will see the meat puff up a little bit with every injection. This is pure flavor. Please don't be shy with your injections. Try to inject every part of this bird that you can. If it oozes out a little bit, don't worry about it. The magic that is inside of this needle is my dry rub mixed with a stick of melted butter. Please click on the link at the end of this video to see the ingredients of my dry rub. Between the magic and the garlic, this turkey will literally be seasoned to the bone. If you don't believe me, lick a bone when you're done and please drop me a comment. Let me know what that bone tastes like. Tie the legs and the wings up. Then tightly wrap her up in foil and place her in a refrigerator anywhere between 12 to 18 hours. Add peanut oil to your pot to the predetermined fill line. For my fryer, it took about five and a half gallons to reach my fill line for a 13 and a half pound turkey.
add pop to the flame and start to preheat your oil anywhere between 325 and 350 degrees. Be sure to monitor your temperature because you do not want it to go over 350 degrees. Safety first, safety first, safety first. Once the oil heats up to the recommended temperature, turn off your flame and slowly, and I mean slowly, start to lower your turkey into the boiling oil until fully submerged. If you drop the turkey in there too fast, the oil will bubble and flow over. And if you keep your flame ignited, it would hit that flame and then there's your fire. That's how most fire starters usually in people's houses. You should check it out on YouTube. Turkey fails. It's hilarious. But try not to do that. Just make sure you turn your flame off first before you lower that turkey. Reignite your flame. At three and a half minutes per pound, this 13 and a half pound turkey will take approximately 47 minutes to complete. After your allocated cooking time has expired, make sure the internal temperature of your turkey is anywhere between 165 and 180 degrees. Anything less than 165 degrees, put her back in the oil for a few more minutes. You do not want to serve undercooked turkey or people can get sick. Once you are satisfied with your turkey's internal temperature, turn your flame off and slowly pull your turkey out of the oil. Let your turkey rest for about 25 minutes before carving. The turkey will continue to cook during this rest period. You can either carve her up or leave her on the stand. It is your preference. However, since I don't like how the slits look where I inserted my garlic, then I will be carving this turkey up. Also, I want to make it easier for my guests to dig in and enjoy. This is If I Can Do It, You Can Do It. I am the Amateur's Amateur. I hope this video was informative and thank you for viewing.